if you can keep expanding your vision of what's possible, it doesn't feel like this hard and like overly intense thing that you have to like grind your way to create success. Success finds you the more you are in alignment with the kind of future and life that you wanna create and only you will know what that is. All right, we are going to talk about the gap and how it relates to your business, how it impacts your business. And a lot of the questions as I put out this prompt to our community asking, you know, what are you, what are you struggling with? Are you in the gap? What are the questions and what are you navigating right now? You know, a lot of our community are entrepreneurs or you're people who are up to big things. You're pursuing big dreams. And I think it's one thing to understand that the gap is this, you know, this personal transformation where you're leaving your old identity, you're in the in-between and you're stepping into what's what's ultimately for you into this next version of you. And that's all good and exciting, but it does absolutely impact your business if you are a business owner. And so we're going to dive into some questions today about how do you handle that? Because, I mean, if there's one thing that's true about my journey, it's been a journey that's been marked by personal transformation. And even if, if, especially if you've been around powerhouse women for a while, I mean, you can physically see the difference in my outer appearance. I don't get too attached to a hair color, a hairstyle, a, a style of dressing, because I know that as I evolve, even those things about me evolve. And I've also learned not to get too attached to any one way that my business looks right now, because I might have a vision for my business for the next six months, but I also don't know who I'm going to be in six months from now. So trying to plan out five or 10 years into the future when I know that at least what's true for me, I am on this planet to evolve, to grow personally. A lot of the conversations that I bring to powerhouse women are conversations that are influenced from my own life and my own transformation journey. So if I know I'm going to be constantly evolving, I can't get too attached to any version of the future because I don't know what that version of the future is going to look like. So this isn't a question that anyone asked, but in case someone out there listening like has really struggled when someone asks you, like, what's your five-year vision of your life or your 10-year vision, and you feel like there's something wrong with you because you can't see it, I also don't see that far into the future. I don't get a, a vision for my business and where it's ultimately going. I'll kind of know bigger macro themes that are important to me. So personal transformation being one. I know that that's important. I know that 10 years from now, I will still be evolving. But do I know if I'm still going to be hosting a live event or do I know what my team is going to look like or exactly what offers I'm going to be selling? No. And it would be a lie to tell you that I do. So when we start to unpack this conversation about how do you show up in your business in a gap, hopefully there's someone out there who needed to just hear that permission and that validation that for some of us, I don't think we're really meant to see a crystal clear picture of what the distant future looks like. And if that's you, it's probably because similar to me, you are on a journey of personal transformation and your personal transformation is ultimately gonna be what dictates the things that you create in the future. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do see a crystal clear path for yourself or for your business, like if you know you're starting a business, you wanna scale it and sell it, and you can see that vision, it doesn't mean that you aren't someone who's evolving. I think it's just a reminder for all of us to hold any plans and goals that we have with very a very loose grip. I always imagine like, palms open, like I'm holding it, but my palm is open. I don't have like this death grip on a goal because if I have a death grip on it and exactly how it's supposed to unfold, I'm making those decisions from my current identity. When maybe six months from now, when I know more, my viewpoint is different. I have different connections around me. I just, I'm going to see it differently. So I always want to leave enough space and enough flexibility for me to change my mind anytime I damn well please, right? I reserve the right to change my mind on any goal, any project, any, any offer, and check in with myself periodically to see if the future that I have been living into still aligns with the person that I'm becoming. So we're gonna talk about how 
your personal growth can affect your business growth. And then specifically how to navigate this in-between time where you know you're changing. And I think from my experience, my personal transformation always precedes the business transformation. So in this weird way, I almost always feel like my business transformation, like how it's showing up in the world, not so much the growth in terms of numbers, but I always feel like the business transformation is lagging behind because it is. My personal transformation happens first and then I'm like, oh, now I see my business through a whole different lens and now I see what needs to happen. So I always, I kind of just have had to settle into this fact that I always feel like my branding is outdated. I always feel like there's a current version of my business that I'm still keeping afloat that I know won't be here forever. I know sometimes like a year ahead of time when there's going to be an end to a certain program that I am offering. And it's not like I make that change right in the moment. So this is kind of a good segue into the first question. Tanya Raybon asked, how do I navigate outgrowing my current job slash business when I still have a passion for the industry, but I'm expanding into a new season, a new business version, kind of the same industry. So it's kind of like this question of like, how do I navigate the transition when I know I'm outgrowing one version of my business and I'm wanting to transition into another one? I think it's kind of what I just said. I usually get the energetic like ping that a transition is coming before I'm actually ready to make that transition. So I think it's this like duality of feeding the vision, clearing space for myself to be in my creative zone and doing things for me like going for long walks, meditating, journaling, getting clearer and clearer as much as I can about the vision of of what I'm stepping into. And it sounds like for Tanya, you may have an, it sounds like you have some clarity around what you're stepping into. So I'm also speaking to the person who's like, I know I want to pivot, but I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. I usually don't get crystal clarity, but I start to feel into how it feels and how that's different from what I'm doing now. And then I just really, again, look at everything I'm doing now from a very, you know, no clenched fists. I just have open palms and I start to go through and I start to match up. Like I remember this one season last year, it was in the spring around, I guess, this time, which is wild. It seems like so much has changed since then. And just kind of like asking myself the question, okay, if if I were going to start Powerhouse Women over from scratch, like it didn't have to be anything that it looks like right now, what would I create? And just noticing my immediate answers to those questions. The first thing that came to mind was the podcast and the event. And then when I started to look at, okay, here's what's really exciting me to grow And then I contrasted it with, well, here's what I'm spending my time and energy doing right now. It was very clear the things that didn't necessarily carry over. So it wasn't like I had the ability to completely shut down my entire original business right away, meaning programs that were bringing in a lot of revenue or, you know, things that were serving in a really big way. It was just the awareness that, okay, if I want to work toward a reality where this is my main source of income, number one, I'm going to start to really consciously look for evidence of how that could happen. So if I want the events and the podcast to be the things bringing in the most money so that, you know, a business makes money, business has to like have revenue to stay afloat. But right now, 80% of my revenue is coming from other sources. I've got to start to expand my mind and start to to just think differently about how to monetize and grow the things that I want to see grow. So I'm it's almost kind of like this, you know, 10% new vision, still 90% keeping the original business and income streams afloat, then periodically and slowly over time kind of going 20% new vision, 80% old vision. new vision, 70%. How that practically looked for us is, you know, the first decision that we made was to reinvest and really double down on the podcast. So right now I'm sitting in Los Angeles filming these episodes in person with my incredible team. And, you know, that was a big investment, something that right now we're not monetizing. We're not selling ad space. We're not really directly monetizing the podcast, but I'm investing in the future and the the future growth of this podcast, knowing that I want this to be one of our main channels. So taking that step, 
Then on the flip side, starting to, you know, look at where I'm investing time or energy into other things and starting to allow programs to close. And it wasn't anything that we did in a super rushed way. For example, our membership program, we made the decision in May last year that we were going to be ending the membership and we didn't actually close it for another six months, more than that six or seven months. So it was like this slow transition of number one, really obviously look grounding this in like the finances of the business and making sure that we were still bringing in the revenue that we needed, but deeply trusting that when you close a door on one thing, it opens up so much time and energy and mental bandwidth for new things, new opportunities to come in. So that's kind of how I've always navigated that transition I think the other piece is how do you keep yourself motivated while you're still showing up in the thing that you know isn't in your future? And for me, that has been just like really grounding myself into my passion for serving the people that we serve. So I still showed up on every single call for our membership, just as excited to pour into those women as I was the first call when we were kicking off the membership. So I feel like that's kind of like where mental discipline kicks in that you might know that you're going to be closing a chapter. But when you think about the people that are still investing in you and showing up for you, I was showing up with the same attitude for them, not because I was as connected to that product, that way of showing up, being a part of the future. And so you know, it was a little bit of a transition and then just really beautifully setting people up to thrive, even when we were delivering the news that something that they loved was going to be ending. And it felt really good. I feel like the way that we really transitioned that offer and that program out of our offer mix was just like the way I would want to do it. We communicated it with love. We allowed space for people to like find what was next for them. And And it felt really aligned. And we just gave ourselves plenty of time to navigate that transition for ourselves and also with our community. So that's probably like the most tangible example I have of going through a similar transition. I love the question that this is kind of like another layer to it of how you navigate when you're in that in-between. Lisa Marie Landreth asked, she said, I'm in the gap so hard. And I love it, just knowing how many of us are really in this season. And then she asked, I'd love advice on how to continue promoting your business and being a match for the right clients while you're transitioning from one version of yourself to another. I find it challenging to show up and be seen when I'm in this energy of calling in the next era and leaving space for it to develop. This is so real. This is such a real part of how the gap feels. And there have been big stretches of time where it's actually not authentic for me to be showing up. And I think that's that's just the reality for me. Maybe it's not for everybody. And I've created a business that because of the ways that I still do show up, this podcast, for example, I'm spending two days getting weeks and weeks and weeks of content created so that I can really go back into a little bit of a cocoon season this summer and just be working on you know, my process, everything I'm processing through. And then as it feels appropriate, showing up, sharing it a little bit on social media. But I think there's this pressure, like we always have to be so visible and constantly on. And my true answer to this is I always default to authenticity. Number one, if I do show up, I'm gonna share in as, as much as I'm willing to share that, hey, I'm kind of in this season where I don't even really know how to show up. I'm in a a transformation season. Has anyone ever felt that? Just sharing authentically where I'm at, even if I'm not planning to share or not ready to share some of like the deeper layers of it, I'm not sharing exactly what I'm, you know, going through, but I'm just sharing with the community like, hey, it's been a little harder for me to show up in this season because I'm changing. I'm becoming someone new. And so whenever you have the opportunity to show up, be authentic, I actually think even if you're not as consistent as you are in other seasons of building trust through consistency, I think that's the fear of like, well, if I stop showing up as much, am I going to lose trust? Are people going to forget about me? Will I become irrelevant? When as long as you know we're being authentic with people and especially being authentic about being in a season that is more challenging, I actually think we can build just as deep 
of a trusting relationship with people by being honest and showing up less and just being really authentic about the season we're in than if we're showing up, putting on a happy face while behind the scenes, we're really struggling. So it doesn't mean you have to show up. Like for me, it's not authentic to like, you know, show up when I'm in my ugly crying mess and, you know, put that out there online. That actually just feels unsafe. That feels like, you know, those are emotions that I'm meant to process really privately and, you know, with the help of the support that I have. So for me, it's not authentic to show up in that way, but I can show up and I'm telling you right now, like this has been a really tough season. There've been a lot of days that I don't actually have anything to say to show up like when I'm thinking about social media. So you can do it in a way that's authentic, that still honors your process, your transformation process, but where it feels appropriate, I think to take people along for the ride. You know, the one thing that I'm really learning by what I've been willing to share and able to share from this process is we're all on our own version of this transformation journey, you know, and the more you're willing to share it, I actually think it gives you the ability to create deeper connections with the people who are meant to follow you into this next season. So releasing the pressure, letting it be okay that sometimes you feel find it challenging to show up and be seen. And maybe maybe you show up and you just say that, hey, I'm finding it really challenging right now to show up to be seen as this version of me because I'm becoming someone new. And just see what that opens up. So I really hope that that helps. I, I just think that anytime we can bring people along on the journey in a way that feels authentic to us, it can just create the deepest trust. This last question is really about pivoting. And... I love this question so much. Sandy Thompson said, what do you do to bolster your confidence when you know that you want to do something new, but it's nothing like you ever imagined and it feels like a gamble? And she went on to share that like her real dream is doing something more creative, but she's always worked in healthcare or being a stay at home mother. And it's just such a deviation from what she's done or what she knows. So she's working to start a new business right now. Yay. We're so proud of you. And she wants this creative business to really be her outlet, but she's afraid it's going to fail. And I want to just share, first of all, so much love for you. When you're willing to take that bold action and work toward your dreams, I think, first of all, the energy of doing that and just really rooting yourself in a sense of pride, that, that that's something that takes such guts, such courage. Most people will never allow themselves to really follow their dreams to that level. It's just something really commendable. And I want to take a moment publicly to acknowledge you for that because it's one of the bravest, boldest things you could do is completely reinvent yourself. And then I think to address this fear of failure, I think it goes back to the expectations that we're placing on ourselves. So for example, if you're in a creative field and you're comparing what you think you can make in that to your healthcare salary, and it just feels like such a big gap, like you can't even imagine how you could ever bring in the same income by doing the thing that you really love. I think it's pointing us to a few different things. Number one, it's going to show us where we have blocks, subconscious blocks, and you know, going and listening to the episode about reprogramming, really starting to look into some of the tools that I'm going to share there as far as how to work with some of these blocks. Some of the blocks that I've had to you know, face are this disbelief that I could do something I love and make a really great income doing it. If you realize that that just doesn't feel possible to you, then the first thing to do is look for people who are doing something creative. Maybe even look for stories of women who later in life or after having kids or, you know, after having a season of devoting themselves to staying at home and raising kids, they went on to create this amazing career. Surround yourself with evidence of other people who've done it and normalize the road you want to follow. Normalize people who are doing something really creative and making a shit ton of money doing it. Like, don't just look for the people who are following their passion, but they're broke, right? I can hear how much you not only want to follow your passion, but also allow it to contribute in a significant way to your finances. And if you haven't seen a lot of examples of that, then it's going to be really important for you to surround yourself with evidence that it's possible and then surround yourself with community. Obviously, if you're a part of the powerhouse women community, you've got this already on lockdown, but surround yourself with as much evidence as possible that you can do it. 
and then notice what fears or what subconscious stories or just what beliefs you currently hold that don't match the future that you want to step into. So if it's fear of failure, allow yourself to go to, okay, well, what is failure to me? What's the worst case scenario? And if that happened, what would I do? What would I do? Okay, great. Maybe this this creative thing that I really want to do just becomes a passion project. And it's not something I'm putting this weight and pressure and expectation that it has to make X amount of dollars. I'm going to have a job that I work that, that I actually really like, and it gives me time to pursue my passion as well. So looking at the worst case scenario and then kind of that example I just gave is like, well, what's the in-between? Because I think especially when when we put pressure on something that's so connected to our heart and soul, we put pressure to, that it needs to make a certain amount of money, it actually can kill the momentum. Good example is Powerhouse Women. When I started Powerhouse Women, I, I didn't really have a plan for this to become my whole financial foundation. I had a previous business that I was still working that was bringing in the income I needed, and it allowed powerhouse women to just grow in an organic way that didn't have this weight of financial pressure on it. And I actually think it really helped. It helped me to stay in my intuition. It helped me to just be really authentic and allow the community to build slowly and steadily versus showing up day one saying, this has got to make me X amount of dollars or I am not going to be able to afford my house or whatever that might that energy might feel like. I don't think it would have taken on a life of its own as fast as it did because I think the people in our atmosphere can feel that pressure that we're putting on ourselves. So what's the in-between? Can you start bringing in income in a different way while giving yourself the freedom to explore this creative passion? Do you have examples around you that it's completely possible to do what you love, to do something in the creative profession? and work the amount of hours you want to work and be with family the amount of hours you want to be with family and also still have that be financially profitable. Surround yourself with as much evidence as possible and dedicate yourself to, I mean, really the the growth in this gap season is the inner work. Where do I have blocks? Where do I have misaligned beliefs? And give yourself plenty of time to work through those because as you do, as you start to transition, what you believe is possible for yourself, for your business, That's where the magic kind of starts to happen around you. And, you know, we won't get too woo woo with this, but it's like if you can dedicate yourself to that and you keep expanding your vision of what's possible, it doesn't feel like this hard and like overly intense thing that you have to like grind your way to create success. Success finds you the more you are in alignment with the kind of future and life that you want to create. And only you will know what that is. So yes, growing a business in the gap, it's weird. It's awkward. It's like trying to grow out your bangs. It's like, what do you do with the in-between? Do you swoop them to the side? Do you, do you just pin them back? We don't know, but there's going to be kind of like this growth in between where there's the previous version of your business that still very much needs to be a part of your life, or maybe it's a job that still needs to be a part of your life while you're working toward your future. But the more you can find gratitude and ground yourself in the gifts that even exist within this in-between season, I think it sets you up for the kind of success that you actually want in the future. So I guess that's good advice when growing out your bangs or growing your business in the gap. So two for one special today. <laughs> 